everybody, welcome back to my channel. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and in today's video, I want to talk to you about my struggles with PTSD in the workplace. Before I get into this video, I do want to put up a trigger warning because I will be talking about some of my mental health problems, particularly PTSD and what the struggles I've had with PTSD in the workplace due to verbal abuse. So if this is not a video that will help you or give you any insight and it could be a trigger for you, please watch for my next videos and we will have some more non-mental health videos coming up in later months after May. So when I decided to start making weekly videos and knowing that May is Mental Health Awareness Month, I wanted to bring to the forefront um, my personal mental health struggle with PTSD in the workplace. Um, this is my personal struggle. This is something that I've been dealing with. And it was something I didn't think I would deal with until I started my job almost three years ago. Um, so to kind of start off with this, I am going to keep things very vague, not anything specific in regards to names or company names. Um, I'm going to keep it as specific or as vague as I can. Keep everybody's privacy, um, you know, private and that includes my co-workers and um, my boss at that point and my current co-workers and just keep everybody as anonymous as I can. Um, again, this is my struggle and it is a struggle that I didn't think I would have and um, it definitely has come around. So to start off with, um, I just want to tell you kind of the story of what I dealt with in regards to verbal abuse in the workplace. Um, I have not heard a lot of this happening and I wanted to bring it to the forefront because this definitely did affect me later on in life. Um, I had been working for this employer off and on since I was 18 years old in 1998. Um, I actually started working there part-time because that was the field I wanted to go into and um, I decided that this would be a good opportunity and so I worked for this employer um, part-time while I was in college off and on and um, eventually was taken on full-time um, full-time permanent later on in I want to say um, probably July of 2003. Um, now, when I first started in 1998, I was fully sighted. And even in 2003, I was still classified as fully sighted. Although in earlier 2003, when I was working for him, like part time, um, temporary, um, I did end up having a flare up and ended up hemorrhaging and having to stop working. But that had all kind of come around and it had all just like you know, gotten better. And so in July of 2003, I started working for this person again, and it was a permanent position. Um, in, you know, July of 2003, I was dealing with some of my vision problems. So uh, this person was very aware of my vision problems and the fact that I had to go up to the eye doctor all the time, uh, but was at this point still classified as fully sighted. Um, I dealt with a lot of my eye problems basically from late June of 2005 through probably 
2007, which was a, a piece of time where I went from what I would classify as being fully sighted 2020 to where I became legally blind. I still worked for this employer and we were able to work through some of my struggles and um, I later became classified as legally blind um, in 2006, late 2006. So this person was there through the entire thing. Um, all of my coworkers were actually the same coworkers from start to finish. And so this was like part of it. We learned how to get through it. And um, as I became legally blind and classified as legally blind, I got with the local blind commission and I was brought in um, magnifiers and I bought a computer magnifier so that I could use my computer. And things were pretty okay. <laughs> I mean, it, it was a hard transition and we had ups and downs. Um, but some of the stuff I dealt with, which I've later found out was a very illegal thing to do, um, was that some of the stuff I would deal with were things in regards to my vision loss directly and not me as a person. So a couple things that used to happen were that he would ask me to go onto his computer and read his email because he accidentally left it up. Well, because I used a magnifier on my computer, that was not possible. And this person knew that and um, would still make me do this. Um, I would struggle and he would get frustrated and um, I, you know, didn't know what else I could do because basically I was being forced to do something that I couldn't do no matter how many times myself or my coworkers told him I couldn't do this, he would still get frustrated. Um, I was told on numerous accounts that if clients were in the office um, or if I was on site, um, that I was not allowed to use my magnifiers, my reading glasses, my computer program, nothing. I was not allowed to use any form of technology when clients were around me. Um, it was like I had to be hidden that I had a vision problem. Um, and that led to a lot of struggles when I, especially when I was on site and I was not allowed to use um, my reading glasses. And in fact, one time he told me that I was actually supposed to tell the clients that I left my reading glasses at home. And that's why I had to use a magnifying glass to read what I could have read so much easier with my specialty reading glasses. Um, as time went on, things got even more um, abusive. And um, I remember going home many times in tears because no matter how many times I told this person that I was willing to get any kind of paperwork showing that he employed a person with a disability, um, he kept saying no. And um, then when I would struggle with projects or struggle with doing things the way this person wanted me to do them, um, they would then come back and say that they didn't believe me, that I needed to do things the way they were telling me to do things. And um, they were just so abusive at yelling at me. Um, a couple things that used to happen was that like they would yell at me saying they didn't believe me, that I couldn't do things the way they were telling me to do things. Um, they would yell at me because I couldn't read the computer screen that was not on my computer. Um, a couple times when I did not understand them or did not hear exactly what they said, they would talk at me very slowly and tell me that I needed to do things this way as if I was stupid and it had nothing to do with me not necessarily understanding them all the time, but maybe just not hearing them correctly. Um, when I would make a mistake, I would be yelled at and screamed at and my papers would have huge red marks all over them. 
Um, and he was not afraid to do this in front of people. Um, and a lot of it just had to do with, I could not see things the way he was writing them. I could not see marks on a piece of paper. Um, I could not see marks that are copier left on pieces of paper. It all had to do with my vision loss. And like I said, even if I told him that I didn't see them, he would say he did not believe me as, as if I was faking my vision loss. Um, there were times where I actually told my husband that I felt like I needed to carry around my um, eye chart results from my eye doctor because that way at least I could prove that I didn't have vision, that I had vision loss problems, that I didn't have perfect vision. Um, there was a lot of problems in regards to me getting back and forth to work, um, which was in a location that was not on a direct bus route and I would have to get help. And um, it was, it was a lot. And, um, you know, it, it went into him writing me letters explaining that I had to do things certain ways. Um, it actually also led into where he made all of us copy him in on all of our emails um, to anybody. And what would end up happening is if we made a mistake, he would then scream at us. So it actually got us into um, like anxiety attacks and we all would have rituals. Um, for me, personally, the ritual would be I would write the email. I would spell check the email. I would rewrite, reread the email. I would then rewrite the email so it sounded better. I would then spell check the email, reread the email, rewrite the email again, spell check the email. And I would go through this process until it sounded perfect. And then I would hit the send button and just hope that I would not hear him yelling in the back. Um, this was so horrible because at this point, I didn't have a program that read me things. I was having to use all of my vision. And I remember every time I had to hit that send button, just getting this anxiety and coming home in tears because I was being yelled at or criticized or that he did not believe me. Um, and it was so hard. And, um, you know, I finally did leave that situation. Maybe not the way I had anticipated on leaving the situation, but I did end up leaving the situation. And, oh boy, did my mental health just get better. And I didn't realize how it was impacting me. Um... And I later on, when I was looking for a job again, was told by a blind commission counselor to be aware that I could have PTSD due to this abuse in the workplace. You know, I didn't think anything of it. In fact, I told her, oh no, I'm, I'm good. I, I don't have the problems. I'm, I'm perfectly okay. Um, I, you know, no problems. I'm good. And um, I later, after that counselor left, um, I later found a part-time job. And although a little bit of the anxiety came back, um, I was always told by this person that, you know, it's okay if I made a mistake. You know, I was there to learn. I was there to get more experience. You know, I, she was so great and, and helped a lot. Um... And then later on, I found the job I currently hold. And um, I thought, oh, I'm just going to go through this. I'm not going to have any problems whatsoever. You know, I'm good. I'm happy. I love where I work. It's so calming. No problems whatsoever. And um, I had the software to make it so I didn't have these problems. And I knew that I was open with my employer that, you know, my vision problems caused me to do certain things. And I just thought it was great. Like, I didn't think anything of it until I made that first mistake. And I didn't even know it was a mistake until I got a phone call from a person who saw my mistake. And... 
I remember her telling me that there was a mistake in the email I had sent out. It was pretty minor, minu minus, it was, it was a subject line, not a body of an email. Um, it was so minor. And she sent, and I remember her telling me that. And I remember, like, feeling this panic. Like, oh my gosh, I made this huge mistake. And I was shaking, and I was in a panic attack mode, and I'm talking to this lady on the phone. And she says to me, okay, here's the thing. We've all done it. I've done it. You've done it. The pastors have done it. Everybody's done it. She says, we just need to fix it. And she says, and here's how we're going to fix it. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, she is calming me down. Now, whether or not she actually knew I was in a panic attack, I don't know. Uh, but just her telling me, I've done this before. It's okay. Let's fix it. And here's how to fix it was huge. And then um, I remember um, a couple other times when I made a mistake and um, the different people that were impacted by the mistake would just come over to me and they would tell me, you know, hey, I noticed there was a mistake on this. Let's fix it. Here's how to fix it. And, um, you know, they would always assure me that I was not perfect. None of us were perfect. We all make mistakes. We've all done this mistake before. And um, just hearing those encouraging words when they had no clue what my um what my job had done previously um and it allowed me to heal so much from that abuse um i still have panic attacks every once in a while um we have things in place so that i don't feel the panic um and rarely do people comment about my mistakes because, again, we're all not perfect and we're not meant to be perfect and we all make mistakes. And that is okay as long as we learn from our mistakes and figure out how to get past them. Um, but it was something that I never even thought would follow me into a job, even though people told me it would. And... Um, I find myself still going into the rituals of, you know, writing an email, spell checking it, rereading it, rewriting it. Um, I do this still to this day, just not in as long of a ritual as I used to. Um, I have had people comment to me about articles I've written um, for work where they've said it sounded amazing that there were just some real minor changes and um, that made me feel amazing coming from these people. Um, but again, you know, as a person who has a disability, who is their sight and they can't always see things um, where other people might see that even more, um, you know, having somebody, uh, you know, criticize that, it, it does follow you. And I just never thought it would follow me like it did, um, but it did. And I've been able to learn. And though I still go into panic attacks when I make a mistake, absolutely. Do I still have panic or have those feelings again when somebody criticizes my work? Absolutely. Um, but do I have more people on my side who who tell me that my work is amazing, who tell me that um, I'm doing a great job, that we're all not perfect, we're not meant to be perfect. Does that help me? Absolutely. And I don't think I would be in a position with my mental health in regards to my PTSD um, that if I wouldn't have had these people to help me heal and they didn't even know and when I tell people what happened, they look at me and they, they totally are in like shock 
Because they would never have seen that and they would have never acted like that former employer did to me. Um, I have since talked with other co-workers and they deal with some of the same things I do. And it is horrible to realize that this employer impacted all of us um, in different ways negatively. And I think sometimes mental abuse in the workplace or verbal abuse in the workplace, whatever you want to call it, does not get looked at as much as maybe it should, um, as maybe depression or anxiety or anything else. Um, and you think that it might not impact you later on in life, but you could be put into a position where um, you feel it. And that is why I wanted to tell the story today, because this is my life. This is something I dealt with and where I don't deal with a lot of mental health struggles. Um, this is something I do deal with, and I don't see a lot about um, this struggle being real. And I want to put it there because maybe one of you is dealing with the same thing Maybe one of you has dealt with the same thing, or maybe one of you is a coworker of somebody who is dealing with this. And for me, like I said, the biggest thing was knowing that I had people there to help me, maybe in that situation, to back me up in that situation, and that I now have people who have allowed me to heal and who have been there during a panic attack or been there during me beating myself up for making a mistake and they've been able to say the right thing. So I hope if you've been around anybody who's dealt with something like this or that you are dealing with something like this, that you have that person and that it is okay and it is normal and it will probably follow me for the rest of my life in different situations and it is just something that I have to learn that um, I am not meant to be a perfect person and that I will make mistakes, and that is okay. So again, thank you for listening to this story, and I hope that your mental health journey and any videos you may watch in Mental Health Awareness Month will bring awareness to all of the different mental health issues that go on um, in everybody's life. So I will see you in next week's video.